and said, if you, if you guys would like to do that, I, he just came across my mind and talked to anybody. But it's July 4th, all on a Sunday. I just thought, well, you know, we might just eat some hamburgers and hot dogs and ice cream and watermelon or something right after service that morning. We cut the service short. Just have a good family celebration if you'd like to. But I need some feedback properly today on that so we can make a decision if we want to do that. Okay? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. You take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 6. So glad you're all here this morning. Amen. And I'm so glad that we are gathered in the presence of the Lord. We can just worship Jesus together. I was, uh, uh, Brother Sherry has been gone with his uh, kids out to the uh, Softball World Series. And he had a great time out there. We're so glad he's able to do that. But he asked me this morning, he said, how you doing? I said, well, I'm a little in my feelings this morning. Because today, 30 years ago, my dad went on to be with the Lord. Amen. And, uh, so I'm just thinking about Pop you know, yeah. and uh, my dad. But I, I, one thing that just encouraged me as I was thinking about it, my brother and I were, were just standing there around his bed. Dad had, uh, in his last few days, and, and, uh, he, he just couldn't. Couldn't communicate, you know. Sister Maria sees this all the time, and uh, because he was getting ready to go home, you know. But all of a sudden, his eyes popped open, and he turned over and looked at me and my brother. Just turned his head, looked at us, and said, "Live for Jesus." Closed his eyes, and I don't think Dad ever said another word. And I'm trying to do it. I know my brother. But that was uh, what I was thinking about this morning. Live for Jesus. When Daddy said it, I don't know all what. I didn't know all what it meant. I'm still trying to figure out all what it means. Just live for Jesus. And I, that's what I'm going to tell you today. Tell you what my daddy told me. Live for Jesus. You, you can put your hope and trust in all kind of things. And live for all kind of things in this world with many choices. But if you'll live for Jesus, you'll never regret it. Yes. Amen. Amen. You'll never regret it. It may not always go your way. But it'll be worth it, I promise you, if you'll live for Jesus. Amen. Sometimes, as I was praying the other day and meditating on, on the Lord and my walk with God, this thought came to my mind, which it has to me and you. Sometimes all I need is one word from God. Mm -hmm. One word. Right. If I can get that word, I can fight the devil's hell. Mm -hmm. If I can get that word, I can do all kinds of things. But I have to have a word from God. Just sometimes, I just have to have a word from God. And I believe God is going to give you a word today. Because the word that comes from Him, is like no other word. Amen. Glory to God. See, Simon Peter said to Jesus when he said that he looked at his disciples, because a lot of them, a lot of them that are following or were following him, when Jesus began to say, You got to eat my flesh and you got to drink my blood, they said, These words are too hard. They turned around and went home. They left. Sometimes that word, that road, you think it's one thing, but Jesus puts you on another one and it gets hard. Yes. And, and they left him. And, and Jesus looked at his 12 and said, well, you're going to leave it too? Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Amen. <laughs> you have the words of eternal life. Yes. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. See, His words are different. His word is so much different than any other word. Any great philosopher, any great science, any great educator, any great politician or statesman, 
They, they can have powerful words. I love to just go back and read the words of, of Winston Churchill. And uh, they just will inspire you, make you want to get up and fight you and stand the ground. We'll never give up. We'll fight on the shore. We'll fight in the hills. We'll fight in the streets. We will never surrender. Boy, that just inspires you. But it hells in comparison to the Word of God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. He, the words of a great poet, beautiful as they might be, they pale on in comparison to the Word. He has the Word of eternal life. Yes. In John 15, verse 17, he said, If you abide in me, and my Word, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will. It will be done for you. That's the power of your words. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask what you need. Ask what you need. Ask what you need. He said, ask what you wish. We said, I might wish for something out of the will of God, not in his word is abiding in you. Yes. If you do, he'll say, that's not my word. That's right. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. If you are in the vine, and his word lives in you, and you can believe his word, then just ask God. Sometimes you just need your word. Just ask God. Yes. If you, if you, now I'm going to say that again. This is a very simple message today. If you are in the vine, in other words, you're in Jesus and he is in you. That his spirit flows in you. You're attached to him. You're connected to Jesus. When you are connected to him and his word is in you and you believe. So get in the vine if you're not today. Get his word in you if you don't have it today. And the third thing is believe. And if you do, ask. And you shall receive. Come on, somebody. Yeah. See, we've got to have a word. I've got to have a word. I need the word today. You know what? I need the word every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if this morning is the only time you're cracking your Bible, you're missing out. Because the word you got today can carry you to the rest for the rest of your life. But you need other words that carry you to tomorrow. Are you here? Amen. You need to crack your Bible. You need to get on your knees. You need to abide in Him. She said if you abide in the vine. That means to live in the vine. To dwell in Him. To take up your dwelling residence in Jesus. Your address ought to be Jesus Christ. Because that's what you're living on. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You gotta live in him. I'm, I'm telling you. You don't, if you're doing it out of religious compulsion, if you're doing it out of guilt or shame, it just ain't the same, guys. God doesn't want us to follow him out of any kind of compulsion. God, God doesn't want you to follow him just because you feel guilty. You know you did wrong. I better follow Jesus. You know, it'll be all right. He doesn't want you to follow him like that. You can train an animal to be obedient through, through various commands. Sometimes I saw a man one time that, that trained a dog that would move. It wouldn't move without that man giving him a command. But the way he trained that dog was he beat beat that dog because he fought dogs. He, God, God, if your, if your idea of abiding in God is that he beat you down and you got to do it because the whole Lord about it, oh God going to get me for that. You, 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 you're confused, friend. God doesn't want that with you. God loves you. Do you understand that? He loves you so much. Amen. He loves you. We talked about the other week. He loves you so much that he laid down his life for you. 
He loved you while you were yet still in your sin, according to Romans chapter 5. He cared for you. He was faithful to you even when you were faithless. Yes. Even when you were sinful. Even when you rejected Him, yes. He loved you. You know, I know that. You know it too. Because He looked down from the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. The ones who had rejected him, the ones who had, who had taken the side of a thief named Barabbas and said, we don't want him. We reject him. He looked out across and said, forgive him. Because he came to seek and save the lost and to love those who are really unloved. God doesn't want you to follow him and abide in him because of some type of religious all he wants you to do is love him. And, and this is the reason why. Because if you will follow him, if you will love him, and if you will abide in him, he'll keep you. Yes. He'll keep you out of that mess you're about to get into. Yes. He'll, he'll show you your path. That you, and when you need a word, he's going to be right there with a the word. And that word is going to have eternal life for you. There are things that he's going to say to you that are going to bring, bring life into dead situations. Yes, I, need a word. I need a word. I need his word greater than I do a politician, greater than I do a poet, greater than I do a leader. I need his word more than I need your word. I need his word more than I do the greatest physician alive on earth. Because sometimes they'll come to you with news and say, we've done all we can. I need a word from God. I, I need a word from God because when I look at man, you know, you can go to your boss and say, boss, how am I doing? He said, man, you're the best employee we got. You, you just so good. You're always going to have a job here. And then two weeks later, you get a slip that say, we had to cut back. Sorry, got to let you go. You can't depend on your boss's word. I know what I'm saying because that happened. Right? Yeah. Talking to the president of the company. Yeah, brother. You, we'll find a place for you. Yeah, you find a place for me, all right. The front door. The back door. I said, I see you. I need a word from the word. In John chapter 1, verse number 1, it said, In the beginning, the word. Are you hearing me? And the Word was God. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. I need a Word from the living Word. I need the eternal wisdom of the ages. And guess what? This old preacher does it and so do you. And every human being on this earth, everybody that's hearing the sound of my voice, you have got to have a word. You won't find eternal life anywhere else. Yes. Except from the eternal God. Yes. Through his son Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was thinking about this. And I was thinking about them old boys sitting out at night. Getting in a boat. Going to the other side of the lake. And all of a sudden, they're doing what Jesus told them, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, get in, go to the other side, I'll meet you over there. You ever wonder why some of them say, how are you going to get there? Where are you going to go? <laughs> you going to walk around? How, how are you going to get to the other side? But no, I probably would. I said, can I just stay here with you? <laughs> Somehow, you seem like you're going to get there faster than we are. But they went. They got in that boat. And as they were getting, as they were going across, y'all know the story. The waves began to come. Crash. Water becoming, began to come in the boat. And if they like me and you, they all begin to bust. Paddle harder. Come on. Find a hat or something. Dip this water out. Turn this thing around and get back to the are you sure he told us to go? I didn't hear him say to tell us to go to the other side. You heard. You was mistaken. He knew it was a storm. He knows everything. He knew it was a storm. You, you misheard the master. I, no, 
he didn't tell us to come out here. That's what we've been doing, right? <laughs> they needed the word, son. Daughter, they needed the word. And they got a word. Jesus, in Matthew 14, 27, he spoke to him and said, Take heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many times have you ever heard, heard him say that to you? Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. <laughs> and then he said to the storm, peace, be still. <laughs> Glory to God. Some of you may be in the storm of life. You may be going, you, you know, you set out. You got a word from God. You got a word from the word. He sent you out and you heard him. And all of a sudden, you're, you're questioning that very word because the storms are come, because the opposition is so great, because you had it all planned in your mind, it's going to work this way. And when this happens, boy, it's going to go. And it didn't happen. And it's not working as your plan. I'm here to tell you I'm giving you a word today. Fear not. It is I, he said. Glory to God. You need that word. Listen, when I'm sick, I need to hear him say what he said to the synagogue ruler in Matthew chapter 8, verse 7. He came to him and he said, my little daughter is 12 years old. She, she's very sick. Somebody needs to hear this today. Give me this word for you. I will come. That's all that synagogue would really need to know. My daughter's sick. She ain't but 12. She ain't never done nothing wrong. She's not even a woman yet. And she's laying there and she's sick. And all the doctors have come. And all the wives people and everybody in my family is getting ready to lay out the, the funeral garments. They getting ready to, to plan the funeral. They getting ready to bury her. But I'm coming to you because I heard that you have the words of life. You may be today saying, I've got, I've got a family member that's sick. But your family member's not sick in the body, but she's sick in the spirit. Yes. You may be saying today that I'm so sick in my spirit. See, nobody knows what you're going through. It may look good on the outside, but nobody knows what you're going through. That, that, that fact hit me suddenly just last night. I read about a man who had everything in life on his side. He was a well-known broadcaster, award-winning broadcaster. Young man, wife, three children, played sports, played with team stars, had his career laid out in front of him. They found him dead yesterday morning. Because life, something in his life that nobody else knew, he couldn't handle anymore. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But God does. He does. And if you'll call out to him today, see, this was a synagogue ruler. He had nothing to gain except the life of his child, but he had everything else to lose. His reputation, his standing in the synagogue. He had all that to lose, but he said, no. I heard you. You got the word of life. And you need this word today. I will come and heal you or them. You ought to receive it. I believe I'm preaching the word of God. For people who need a word from the Lord. <clears throat> because we've said it. Everybody amen. Sometimes all you need is a word. And you need a word. You may be walking in life, serving the Lord, 
giving to God all that you have and you are facing the very forces of demonic oppression from hell. It seems like everything comes against you and it's evil and it's wicked. And you, you, you got love that says it's acting a fool. Where, how come they act the way they act? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He's in this earth. Until that day, he's cast into the pit. He's in this earth, and he is operating. And he's come to kill. And he's coming to break against everything that God wants to do. He's come to undermine everything. And sometimes it looks like he's winning the battle. Come on, somebody. Be real. Sometimes it looks like we're about to go under. Sometimes it looks like the devil's got the upper hand. And he's going to win this thing. And then there's nothing that we can do. But I will tell you, you need a word from God and it's just one word. Just one word. Matthew 8, verse number 32. He has seen a demonic man and he has set that demoniac free and he has sent the demonic spirits into a pig. Yes. A bunch of pigs. Yes. And then the Bible says in verse 32, and he said to them, this one word, one word, go. Go. I'm going to say that. Go. I'm saying that to every demonic force. I'm saying that to every hindering influence in your life. I'm saying that to spirits of disease. I'm saying that to spirits of confusion. I'm saying that to the spirit of fear. I'm saying that to the fear, the spirit of doubt and unbelief. I'm saying that to every demonic spirit that is trying to undermine what God is building in your life. I'm saying it in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. Because he said go. And those pigs jumped off a cliff and drowned themselves. The whole earth. And that man who had once been bound was set free. The devil has no power over you. I want you to understand that. Don't by your words give him power. Don't by your actions and actions give him the fear. All you need is a word from God to tell him to go and he'll go. You can overcome him once and for all if you'll just abide in him. Let his word abide in you. And believe you can speak the same words that you spoke. Are you hearing that? I just wish somebody would give God a good, great hand clap of praise. Because somebody can the victory. Go. I'm going to tell you something. See, I remember that day. Yeah. Molly, you was just a little bitty baby. 30 years ago. <laughs> We're standing there. You see, the thing about it is, is my, my relationship with my father was one of love, but one of just love and hate. For a long time, I, I didn't even like my daddy. No need to go into the reason why. But he got saved. Then I got saved. Yeah. But still, after I got saved, that it took, took a lot of years yeah. for me to <coughs> have that love for him that I had. I'm standing there, and he's dying. And I'm saying to God, God, I just got him back. Why are you taking me? I ain't never really had a daddy. Now I got one. And he's fishing to leave. And my heart was broken. And despair had overcome me. And I remember just a few days after he died, happened to be Father's Day. And I just, I couldn't. 
I couldn't go to church for a Father's Day service and get in my truck, ride up to the bank of the Alabama River, and just sat there and talk to God. And God helped me that day. But I needed a word from God. I needed this, see, because my heart was broken. And it may not be the death of a loved one. It could be some business that you may have. Could be some plan that you have. Could be some family member that, and it just seems like all hope is lost. Yes. It just seems like every, everything that you thought and you hoped for and you dreamed for is gone. Mm. And all hope is lost. Remember that synagogue ruler who said, Come and heal my daughter. But when Jesus got there, it seemed all hope was lost. Because they began to wail because she wasn't breathing anymore. She had died, they said. Jesus is the word. You understand? Yes. <laughs> he walked into that room, and you need this word today. He ain't dead. He's just asleep. Amen. That's what God told me about. He said, son, he's just asleep. Matter of fact, he's more alive than you are right now. Yes. Matter of fact, you're going to see him. Matter of fact, he just got that son. God really began to speak to me and said to me, he just got that. When he blinks his eye, you're going to be standing right there with him. Because it's just a moment you're going to be there. God brought me hope in that moment when I said, oh, Lord, I just got God, oh, just, now listen, I told you I teared up a little bit, and it's still, I ain't got there yet, Jimmy. <laughs> but he's just asleep. Yes. He's not lost. Yes. Amen. That business may just be asleep. That plan may just be asleep. That marriage that seems like it's about to go may just need a word from God. And life Amen. come back into it. Amen. Oh, Amen. I know it's a simple message, but I'm telling you, I believe in God. Amen. I'm telling you that when He has asked you, God has asked you to do things that you think are impossible. And in the natural, they are impossible. In the natural, it has been impossible, Brother Rip, for this church to pay that debt off. In the middle of a pandemic, we're closer now than we've ever been. Yes, it's impossible with me. That's right. And I just like, just like this man came to Jesus and his hand was withered. He couldn't move his hand. He couldn't do anything with his hand. And Jesus asked him to do something that he'd never been able to do. Stretch your hand out. Stretch your hand out. Ronnie, think about that. Think about all those people standing around listening and saying to themselves, is this man crazy? Yeah. <laughs> this man can't do that. But he empowered you. God may be asking you the same question today. You're against something that you can't do. That's when God takes over. Yeah. Hey, hey, are you hearing me? Every one of these things up here this morning, I'm, I encourage you, if you can't do it, stretch your pen out, write it down, and say, God can do it. And he may be asking you, and you say, I can't. He said, that's all right. Stretch your hand. I got this. I got it. I'll empower it. I'm the word of God. I was from the beginning. Yes, yes. I am now. And I always will be. Yes. I am the word of eternal life. Stretch forth your hand. Yes. And we know that story. That man stretched his hand. Yes. You may just need to hear that today. I just need a word from God. When you try, he's trying to get it to you. Yes. This morning. 
and another breath and courage from it. He'll give you a word that you can take another step forward and just keep on walking. He'll give you a word that in the midst of the storm, when your heart is broken, you will have peace. Yes. He is the word. Yes. And he will give you himself. Will you stand? And you're always going to preach along today. <clears throat> I have a lot of times uh, other preachers say, well now, Brother Don, how long do you preach? I say, I preach to God through. And if it's 15 minutes, it'll be 15 minutes. Anything after 15 minutes is going to be me, not God. Right. <laughs> I want to give you what God's got, not what I got. If I tell you what I got, you wouldn't want to know. It's crazy up there. Amen. All we need is a word from God. He's more than enough. That is his name. Abraham said he is Jehovah Jireh, our supply. They called him El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. He is more than enough. He ought, and listen, the more can just be one word. One word from God can give you strength. Will you receive it today? I'm just going to ask you to do something a little bit different. That's okay. No, I'm not calling you up. I'm just going to ask you to lift your hands to heaven. Just lift your hands up and just ask the Lord. I need your word. I need a word. I need a word. Now, just leave it up there. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you provide every word that's needed here today. Yes. Different hands is different words. Different situations for every person here. God, even in my message, I didn't cover all the words that need to be given today, but you, you got them. An yes. ample supply. Yes. So in the name of Jesus, I speak this word delivered to every person who has lifted their hands today. Some, it may just be the word, I'm sorry, Lord. I repent. I want you to be my Lord once and for all. Some, it just may be a word, clarity, and direction. Some, it's a word. There's a word that he gave you walking in this morning. And the word that you need to hear right now. And God, you're speaking it to these. Is behold, I open a door that no man can shut. And I shut shut doors that no man can open. And I am opening and shutting doors for you right now. God, that's your, that's your word for somebody. So I, I just, as a preacher, I just speak your word to every person in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go and give the Lord a good praise. And praise him like you believe that word. Praise him like he answered. Praise him like he's speaking. Oh. Love you guys so much. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your giving, for your loving, for your caring for one another. It's a great church and great people. Yes. The best yes. is yet to come. Yes. Yes. God is working where we can't see. Yes. Behind every cloud, down the next valley, he's already working. Yes. I love you guys. Amen. I thank you so much. And I bless you. Well, you can give on the way out as you go. But listen, don't just rush out today. Greet somebody in the name of Jesus and tell them God's got a word for you. Yes. God bless you all. Amen.